I'm convinced at this point that I'm going to live through one historical event per year for the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. The president's been shot. I'm sorry, former president, candidate. I could not believe it when I opened up my TikTok and saw that Donald Trump had got shot in the ear. Are you? I don't care what you think of the man. He gave us probably the best photo I've ever seen. That was an, I don't care. I'm sorry, that was an incredible photo. Unfortunately, a father did lose his life that day. Um, the gunman obviously missed his mark, but he did hit somebody else and injure others. We have a lot to go over today, so let's get started. 6.04 Saturday evening, before an adoring and roaring crowd, former President Donald Trump steps to the podium. Seven and a half minutes later. Take a look at what happened. Pandemonium. Amid a series of sharp pops, Trump touches his ear and ducks. Three seconds later, Secret Service agents are swarming in to shield him, and security snipers have opened fire on the would-be assassin. It seemed initially like firecrackers went off. As chaos erupts among the attendees, He's got a gun! one rally-goer sees another man has been killed despite the rescue efforts of bystanders. They jumped the bleachers and started clearing the bleachers. And then I helped carry the body of the man down out of the bleachers, and they took him to a tent um, behind the bleachers. Uh, we put a towel over his head, but he, he, he's deceased. It all happens fast. 30 seconds after the first shots ring out, the podium's microphone catches Secret Service agents coordinating Trump's evacuation from that stage. Hold, hold, when you're ready, on you. Then, just over a minute after the violence started, the all clear. At 6.12 p.m., the agents rise with Trump and try to usher him rapidly away. But, he says... Let me get my shoes. Let me get my shoes. Shortly after, he's on his way to a safe vehicle. But he tells agents to pause again. He turns to the rattled crowd in what will become an historic photo. Soon, pictures start surfacing of what appears to be a dead gunman on a roof not more than... 500 feet away from Trump's right side as he stood on the stage and the much more methodical police work begins. We need the public's help, anyone who was on scene who saw anything. As the FBI and partners start piecing together who the assailant is, how he got there, whether he acted alone, and ultimately why he fired, an investigation that certainly will go on for months into a violent explosion of seconds. Oh, that made my heart sink so much. I feel so bad for the family that lost um, their father that, that day. I have a quick clip here about the photographer who caught this iconic photo. We're going to look into a little bit of what he has to say. It happened so fast, but now I can see it all in slow motion. I never thought I'd ever see an assassination attempt on the president and to be there to photograph it. My name is Doug Mills. I've been covering politics since 1983, and I was yesterday covering President Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. I was taking pictures and that's when the pops started happening and I just happened to have my finger on the shutter and I heard the pops and just kept shooting. I didn't know what I had captured, but when I got to my laptop, I could see that bullet flying behind his head because it's definitely not in the frames right before it and, and it's not in afterwards. It's only that one frame and I was shooting an eight thousandth of a second. It captured that streak behind him. I covered the president for... 40 plus years and I always know which way they come on stage and which way they go off and the closest stairs were to my right so I ran over to that side and witnessed him being helped up to his feet and my immediate reaction was oh my god he's, he's alive and then all of a sudden he got near the edge of the stage and raised up his fists in defiance and I could see the blood on his face then. That defiant went away like in a split second and he became very serious. I thought he looked very pale. Two very different moments happened, you know, in a matter of seconds. It is a moment that is unlike any in my lifetime, my history, my job of covering the White House since 1983. You never think about something like this ever happening because it's so frightening. That was genuinely the first time I saw that clip. The, oh my gosh, you can see the... 
wow what a photo I'm going to mute the next clip just because there is music so for copyright reasons um, so I suppose I'll just talk over it there was a man by the name of Corey I do have his daughter's Facebook post I'm gonna share with you as well he was very excited to go to this rally and he ended up shielding his family with his body um, but he did not make it as they explained they they put a towel over his face. There was an older gentleman who tried performing CPR on him. I think a lot of people rushed and tried to help him, but as you can see, there's a large amount of people so trying to get him out of there. I'm going to share his daughter's Facebook post that she wrote about her father. Yesterday, time stopped, and when it started again, my family and I started living a real-life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned into the most traumatizing experiences someone could imagine. I know the media will cover this event and I'm going to try my best to stay away from looking at everything, especially because I've already seen and lived through it in real time. But I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about him. He was the best dad a girl could ask for. My sister and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer, and he would do whatever it is you needed. And if he didn't know how, he would figure out how. He could talk and make friends with everyone, which he was doing all day yesterday, and loved every minute of it. He was a man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and members as a family. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Um. Wow, okay. <sighs> Let's talk about grief hitting at the most inconvenient moments. I lost my dad less than a month ago, so reading this is really hard. So please, so please bear with me. <clears throat> this is why I have tissues back here, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Shit, I'm so sorry. I was not expecting um that to come out. Okay. Ooh, where was I? Oh my goodness. Uh, whew. The media will not tell you that he died a real-life superhero. They're not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They are not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. Oh, pull it together. <laughs> he loved his family. He truly loved us us to take a real bullet for us. And I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. I want nothing more than to wake him up and for this not to be a reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father brother, uncle, son, and friend, and I will never stop thinking about him and mourning and, uh, and mourning over him until the day that I die too. July 13th will forever be a day that has changed my life. I will never be the same person I was less than 24 hours ago. There are a lot of children out there that say their dad is their hero, but my dad really is mine. I don't think I would be here today without him. Dad, I love you so much, and there aren't enough words to express how deep that love goes. I know you'll give to heaven some hell, and I know that God is proud of the man that came to his gates yesterday. Conspiracies are already coming out because the suspected shooter, um, Thomas Crooks, I believe his name is, when the president or vice president or former president, whatever, goes and visits somewhere, the place needs to be scouted out. They're looking for all potential angles that something could happen. Now, the reality of stopping any violence whatsoever in a public setting like this, I just think is impossible. I don't think any amount of security would ever stop something like that. And that's what really scares. That's what really scares me about going to like rallies and big events like this. I am not going to get into the conspiracies today. Maybe we'll talk about this another day too, and get into some of the reasons maybe why he wasn't spotted. I've heard several things now. I want to wait until a little more information comes out. But think about how close his ear. I don't know if people are coming to grasp with how close we were to witnessing a headshot. And everyone there, they did get to witness a death. Let me know what you guys think down below and I will see you in my next one.